MovieWeb.com. Well, my first question is, you guys have a lot of footage of the tightrope walks in the beginning. Why isn't there any video footage of the two tower walk? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, there is no footage of my walk because um, the police came to the roof uh, where my friend was about to uh, take the 16 millimeter camera and start shooting after he took the beautiful pictures that we all know of and who, which are in the film. And the police arrived just at that moment and he had to hide and save his pictures. So it's, it's insane, but there is no moving footage. But actually it's great, I think, because now look at the film that James did. It's, uh, it's actually in answer to uh, the fact that there was no footage up there. Well, with like the bridge walk, did you recreate a lot of that, or was no? No, that, that, that footage existed. Footage? Um, Philippe was very, I think, very properly careful about trying to document what are essentially ephemeral moments of beauty, and so there is footage of, of a, a walk at Sydney Harbour Bridge that's very beautiful footage, and that's all real footage, of course. Um, but you know, I d didn't really feel the absence of moving footage because I think that those moments in time that are caught with the images that that Philippe's accomplice took from the North Tower are so beautiful and transcendental that you know you create these moments for the audience to experience the, the joy and beauty of this event. Now one of my favorite scenes in the film is where you're upset because people keep asking you why you did this. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering do people still ask you why and does it still upset you when they approach you with that question? You know people still ask me why and it still upset me <laughs> because um, well it's a natural question and uh, but to me it's so out of what I was doing that I was not motivated by a goal. Uh, even still today I claim I don't have a career, I don't have a next step, I'm kind of an artist struggling to to create and um, at the time this idea of putting a wire there and dancing freely on it unannounced illegally um, had no why behind it and, and I love the idea that to this day I still cannot answer this question <laughs> I like that too it's kind of funny now I want to know you had a lot of archival footage it seemed like in the film did you always intend to have somebody come in and document this experience well it came uh, from me from the beginning I, I in a naive way um, I I wanted to uh, create a film of the whole adventure. So I invited a movie maker to start shooting until I aborted the whole operation because I thought there is no room for a crew as I am going to sneak in a building at night. So you have to choose to make a bank robbery or a film of a bank robbery. And you know I chose to make a bank robbery. Actually, it was not a robbery, it was an offering. I gave something out. Now, how did you get a hold of the footage and start working this into... I had it in my trunk, so I put it in front of James, and he was, like, so happy. Yeah, yes, I was maker. thrilled uh, <laughs> to see boxes of 60-millimeter of film, negative. Uh, it's beautifully, you know, exposed and preserved, and it just gives you, in the middle of the film, this... Actually, what, what more than what it shows you, it shows you the spirit of what was going on, the playfulness, the the frolicking in the fields of young people. So uh, that's, the, the, for me, the, the, the principal virtue of it is, well, there are two virtues. One is that it shows you various processes that needed to be overcome, various challenges that are being worked on in France before they come to New York to do the, the actual coup itself. But secondly, and probably more importantly, it shows you the spirit of this adventure and a group of young people um, trying to do something that feels like it's impossible, they're gonna do it, and they're gonna have fun doing it too. Did you, did you know this stuff existed no, when I you didn't. set out to make no, this? No, I didn't. Um, you know, I, 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 it was one of those lovely discoveries. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, one of the things the film doesn't touch on is what you guys were doing for money to support and get this thing off the ground. Well, what, um, it's unbelievable, but uh, I was, and I am still am a street juggler, and I'm often asked, how did you uh, find the money to buy the cable, to buy flying tickets, to uh, you know, make your friends eat in New York for months? And the answer is quite unbelievable. I was passing my hat in Washington Square Park in the streets of New York, um, making a fortune, and of course, uh, that was not enough enough for the adventure to be financed, so a few good friends put more than a few quarters in my hat at, a, at times, but uh, basically it was like that, it was made from my street juggling. Okay, well now a lot of these documentaries have come out and people pick them up for like a theatrical movie, are you guys planning on doing that? Like making that a feature out of this? Oh, you mean the, the documentary as a, as a kind of stepping stone to another film? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's very possible, but um, not, not, not sure what to say about that, really. No. 
Well, in my projects, but I'm not here to talk about it, yes, there is a feature film in development, but we're here to talk about something that exists, not something that is in planning. Okay, well, I was just wondering if this was an extension of Yes, that. yes, yes, and, and there had been a play, and I have other books in my head. Yes, this adventure is so rich that it can actually offer itself to different way of being seen. But at the moment, this is the first uh, important work that we're looking at, and I'm very happy that uh, Man on Wire is now on the screen. Now, during the making of this, did you ever take him out to try to show him how to do the wire walking, or is this something like very few people can do? Well, um, I would not impose on somebody, uh, come, I will show you. I will wait that they beg me to teach them. And uh, James was too busy making his film. I'm sure in his heart he wanted to, maybe he wanted to, for me to teach you, but you a never little, asked but me. But it was, it was, I, I watched Philippe walking a lot and, and rehearsing and, and doing his rehearsals, and that process was very, very important to understand the kind of you know the physical grace and poise of what it what a wire walk actually is. So we spent a lot of time around the wire um, as Philippe practiced, and I found the music from the film from that process. Philippe has a series of musical uh, pieces that he likes to walk to and rehearse to, and one of them was a, was a piece by Michael Nyman, the English composer, and so that was the the beginnings of, of a score to the film. I then approached Michael Nyman and used Michael Nyman's music as part of the film and to make the film big and epic and monumental, the music's very important to that. So not, I didn't have any ambitions to walk on the wire. I'm a terrestrial person. <laughs> but the good part is that I absolutely needed a director who has a big fear of heights, and that's him. <laughs> <laughs> it added a certain kind of dimension to my own sort of appreciation of it, if you like, that I'm, I'm terrified of vertigo and, and, and suffer from it very badly.